Okay, this lesson is going to be uh, creating a sandwich shop website. So the first thing we have to do is go ahead and create a file. So I'm going to go ahead and click on File and New. And this is going to be our HTML file. So I'm going to go ahead in and save it. So I'm going to hit a Save. It's going to ask me where I want to save it. And I'm going to save it in my Documents folder. And I'm going to make a new folder. And I'm going to call this uh, Sandwich Shop. Okay, so now I have it going in, the, in my Sandwich Shop. And I'm going to call this Sandwich Template underscore template dot HTML. And it's important for us to have the HTML at the end of it so that uh, Sublime knows that's what we're doing. It's going to help us with some... Uh, of our HTML making the, our lives a little bit easier. And I'm going to hit save. All right, so now I want to create the basic um, shell of this. And I simply have to just type HTML on the screen and press the tab. And bang, it goes ahead and gives us what we need for our starting of our shell. So I'm going to go ahead and put in um, a title, Sandwich Shop. Okay, and then um, we're going to need some other stuff. One of the things we need to do is let them know we're using HTML5. So I use a lesson symbol and then an uh, exclamation point and then uh, in caps, doc type and then lowercase HTML and then close that. Okay, this is a just a one tag, no opening and closing, letting the browser know that we're using HTML5. Okay, then we have our title, and then there's some other things that we can put in here. Um, uh, one is going to be um, our link to our uh, CSS page. So let's go ahead and do that next. We're going to want to have an external sheet attached to this. So I'm going to do File and New File again. Okay, this is going to be our CSS page. And then I'm going to immediately save it. So I'll do File and Save. And then I'm going to call this, um, I'm just going to call it sandwich.css. And then I'm going to copy this control C because I'm going to need that name. And then I'm going to save it. And it's going to save right into the same folder that our template is. And now we're going to go ahead and link those two files together. And I'm going to do that with link. I'm going to type link just like that. I'm going to press tab, and it's going to put in all the extra HTML for me. So no lesson symbol, just link and tab. And it says, well, where is the file? And I'm going to go ahead and paste in the name of our file. Uh, that's what we need because the, this file is in the same directory as our HTML page. So uh, right now we have um, enough for our pages. So the next thing we're going to do is go into the body and start putting some structure in. Now, one of the things that we're going to do is that I want to have this so that um, it has blank margins depending on the size of the screen and then all my contents in the middle. Um, if we used to use the body for that, the body spans from one side of the screen to the other unless we put some margins in. Um, but the better thing to do is to use a structure tag, a block element called div, and I, I can always forget to... Um, Okay, so I'm going to type in div, D-I-V, and then press tab, and there's my div tags. And then this is going to go the length of my page. Nothing is going to be below my div except my closed body. Everything's going to be in here, and now I'm going to name this. So I'm going to say that this has a class equal to, and then we're going to give it a name. And uh, the standard name for this is wrapper, or sometimes it's called container. So everything is going to be in my wrapped up in my wrapper, um, and then I'm going to put all my other elements inside. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do inside my wrapper is I'm going to make a header, and I'm just going to type in header here, and then close it. 
and that's another way of typing it. <laughs> okay, the next thing we're going to have is a navigation se se uh, se section. So I'm going to, oh, I can't, I, I have a hard time remembering not to type in anything. All right, so nav and then press tab. And now we have our nav. And I'm just going to type in um, navigation. We're actually going to use that later on. And then I'm going to press enter. And the next section is going to be my, um, I'm going to call this section. I'm going to press tab. And it's going to fill that in. And I'm going to put in, um, let's go ahead and put in just section. Again, this is just going to be a placeholder. If we don't put anything in when we render the page, there's nothing there. So we want to go ahead and do our last one. Is going to be our footer. Press tab. And then type in footer so we can see what we have on our page. And you can see I'm pushing this div down on the bottom, so I'm just going to go ahead and move that back up again. We don't need to have that much room. So we're going to have a basic page that's going to have a header along the top, a navigation on the side. This section is going to be our course, our content for our page, and then we're going to have a footer along the bottom. So let's go ahead and save this page, file and save. And let's go ahead and see what it looks like. So I'm going to go into Windows Explorer and go into my sandwich shop. And there are my two pages. So I'm going to right mouse click on sandwich shop, sandwich dot no, temp, sandwich template. And then tell it I want to open it up. And we can open it up with uh, Internet Explorer. I don't have Firefox loaded on here. But I hate Internet Explorer. It tends to do freaky types of uh, rendering. So we're going to render it our Chrome, which is our most uh, forgiving of browsers. Okay, and it's loading, and that's it. So this is all we have so far. Each of these are block elements. So if we right mouse click on here and then do inspect element like I did before, um, Chrome will open up and allow us to be able to see what's in each of them. I see my nat my everything is inside my wrapper. So I hit the down arrow to open everything up, and you can see there's my header, there's my navigation, there's my section, there's my footer. All of these are block elements, so all of these have um, go across and fill up the entire container. Okay, so <clears throat> if I was going to click on that and then go into here, you can see that is the content. Uh, there is no padding, there is no border, there is no margin. So that's our next thing. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and style these up a little bit so we can uh, see what we're doing. All right, so go ahead and save uh, all pages. So let's go uh, back to Sublime and do File, Save All, and then we'll finish. We'll start with this again on the next lesson. Oh, we left off last last time. This is what we had, our basic structure of our website. So now we need to go ahead and get that looking a little more attractive. And we're going to do that by going into our CSS uh, to have that done. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a body. I'm going to structure the body, or actually style the body. And I want to go ahead and do a background color. And as soon as I start trying uh, typing background, it's going to go to background color. I'm going to press tab. And now I can go ahead and put a color in. So what color should I use? Well, there's a good website to use for that. Um, it's called um, html-color.codes.info. Uh, this is a pretty easy one to use. And if you scroll down, it has this color chart here uh, that gives you some uh, basic um, safe colors uh, to use. My body, I want to have a really dark blue background. So I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom here and I'm going to click on this. And it's going to give me that a color here so I can see what it looks like and then also give me the color code. And this is a hexadecimal code for that color that's um, red, let's see, red, green, blue, RGB. So I just go ahead and copy this, Control C. And then I can go back into my Sublime and do Control V and put it in. All right, so now I have the background color. Whoops. If I go ahead and do a file save, 
and then go back and refresh my page by clicking on the tab and refresh and that's what we've done so this is going to be my mat that I'm going to lay my content on top of so let's go back to sublime and the other thing I want to do is uh, there's some extra margins uh, well let's go ahead and um, also want to center everything so I'm going to do text align center oops and that's going to um, take care of my body okay the next thing I'm going to do is I have this um, container uh, called wrapper and I want to go ahead and program that next so I'm going to go in here and we use a dot for classes we use a hashtag for IDs the only difference between a, cl a class and an ID is an ID can only be used once and a class can be used many times we're only having one uh, div we only have one wrapper on here but we're gonna go ahead and use a class anyway um, so I'm gonna do dot wrapper and then parenthesis and now we're gonna go ahead and give it some width okay the standard width on web pages is 960 pixels so if you go to a website you notice there's borders on the right and left hand side and in the middle is the content this 960 pixels is the width of that website we don't go all the way from one end to another okay and then the next thing I want to do is I want to set up put a margin on there because I don't want it going all the way to the end now the margin is going to the we're going to put in here is something that's going to be zero for the top all right I don't want any margin on the top I want it to go all the way to the top and then this, and the bottom is zero margin also and then on the right and the left I'm going to use something called auto and auto is going to say that I want this 960 and whatever the rest of the space is on the website so whatever the rest of the website is I don't know how big the monitor is going to be it'll just make the margin bigger or smaller depending on the size of the screen all right so zero for top and bottom so it goes top right bottom left so top and bottom is going to be zero and right and left is going to be auto depending on the size okay <clears throat> and then we can go ahead we're not going to see much of a difference on that because we haven't gotten anything else set up so let's go ahead and do our header next so we can see some something on the page so right now we have styled the body and we've styled the wrapper and now we're going to style the header and then we'll stop and see what we've done so I'm just going to use header because that's an HTML tag so there's no dots or, or hashtags and what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to give it a height and that height's going to be 100 pixels so that we can see something and then I'm going to give it a background color so we can see a difference between that and our regular background so for that one it's going to be let's see it's going to be a dark blue but lighter than our background so if I go back and my HTML color code I'm going to make this probably something like this maybe yeah so I'm going to go ahead and copy this whoops control C and then I'll go back to sublime and paste it in okay so now I have uh, some looks like I'm also going to go ahead and put a border around there and we can do top bottom left or right but if we just leave it as border then it's going to be top bottom left and right and let's just go ahead and put a one pixel let's make it solid and let's make it black okay I think we have that all done so let's go ahead and do a file and a save and let's go back and refresh and see how our page is looking so we go back to sandwich shop tab and I refresh Ooh, okay that's what it is you can't really see because this um, the screen is so small 
Um, you can see there's a little tiny margin here, but if I drag this open and then pull it back and forth, you can see that if I make the screen bigger, the auto uh, margins is going to make this margin bigger and bigger depending on the size of the screen. So the more I larger the screen is, the smaller it is. So let's go ahead and see how that works. Now if I start pulling this in, you can see that it keeps going smaller, smaller, smaller until I finally get to where I'm at 960. Now if it goes 960, whoa, now I've actually gone below. It won't go, it, 960 is big and then I'll put scroll bars uh, on the bottom of the page. And we don't, We'll worry about that later on. We're talking about responsive websites, but we want to just see how that header uh, is looking. Looking pretty good. Gosh, 15 minutes already. Okay, let's stop. And then we'll do something next.